or federally administered tribal areas. The central government is, well, let's just say they're not entirely in control of that part of the country. Right. It served as a base for all kinds of armed groups over the years. Uh-huh. The U.S. started staging cross-border raids there at the turn of the century, chasing after combatants that fled out of Afghanistan. The Pakistan army has tried to work with the U.S. to confront them from both sides, but that only escalated anti-American sentiment within the FATA. You can only get away with so many botched civilian strikes, after all. I thought that post-SOP, the U.S., pretty much pulled out of Afghanistan. You know, after all that anti-war economy stuff broke out. They did. That put an end to the FATA strikes, but definitely not the anti-American groups. Now their anger's channeled towards the pro-U.S. central government instead. Wouldn't this visit just enrage the FATA groups even more, though? I know President Salam's pretty much on the American side. Yeah, but Salam doesn't care. He's got no interest in dealing with them. He wants to get the FATA back under control, and I guess he wants America's help doing it. And how do his people feel about that? It's pretty much 50-50. A lot of people hate the U.S., for sure. But a lot of others have been directly affected by the anti-government suicide bombings, too. There's definitely some deep-seated support for helping the U.S., but only if it means ending the violence once and for all. Sounds like we could see civil war here any moment. What about their intelligence bureau, the ISI? How do they feel about all this? They haven't commented, publicly. People are always saying how much bad blood there is between the ISI and the civilian government. Oh yeah, there are stories all the time about their involvement with insurgents or terror groups. Depending on how the ISI acts, things over there could change pretty damn quickly. No wonder Armstrong chose this place. It's like one big powder keg. Hey, uh, Ryden? You know, Sam, he looked... almost happy. Yeah. Crazy bastard. He put everything he had into that fight. Wanted to kill me so bad. But once he saw how the fight would turn out, it was like... the thought made him smile. Of course, I guess if he didn't mess with you in Denver, you wouldn't have... Well, you know. <laughs> Monsoon would have killed me. I would have never lived to fight Sam. So why'd he do it? Did he think he'd break you for good? Who knows? Maybe waking me up was his plan all along. Yeah, I don't know. But there was definitely something going on. He had plans for you. Guess now we'll never know. Yeah, he's gone. But I'm not. And there's still work to do. What do you think President Hamilton's trying to accomplish with this visit? He had to realize it'll rile up Pakistan's anti-government groups. Hard to say. He could be trying to rebuild America's image with the Pakistani people. You know, pledging financial support and all that. But is President Salam looking for military support? I kind of doubt most Americans would be willing to fund more of that kind of effort. There's a lot of strong sentiment against the war economy. Especially now that the Patriot censorship is dead and gone. Besides, the recession's got a lot of people looking to cut the military's budget. True, but nobody wants to be soft on terror. I mean, one incident's all it takes to make the pendulum swing the other way. One incident? Just like what Armstrong's got in mind. Another possibility is that Hamilton's visiting just to test the waters. You know, see how the American and Pakistani people respond. Hamilton is a pragmatic guy, to put it nicely. To put it not so nicely, he'd strip naked and dance on his desk in the Oval Office if he thought it would boost his poll numbers. Armstrong used to play football? Apparently. Quarterback for the University of Texas, so he must have been pretty good, too. So the star quarterback turns big-time politician, huh? Guess he'd have no problem dodging shoes from angry protesters. Well, it shows he's always been a leader, one way or another. He's obviously not some dumb jock, or this would be a lot easier. Yeah. Too bad he didn't go pro, right? We wouldn't even be having this conversation. Ah, they would have chewed him up and spit him out. He looks strong, for a politician. But nothing too serious. Definitely no wind of destruction. Well, sure. He's not exactly a seasoned fighter, either. Didn't see any action with the Navy. And you know he can't be a cyborg. A public figure couldn't hide that for long, not with current tech. Yeah, he may be an asshole, but he shouldn't be much of a threat. Well, he wouldn't be in Pakistan, in any case. I'm sure it's all being run by underlings and cronies. No trail to lead back to him. Too bad. I was looking forward to killing him with my own two hands. We can't go around killing civilians just for being evil, Raiden. We're not even at war here. <sighs> 
Just stop the assassination attempt, Raiden. One thing I've been thinking? Sam and the rest of the Winds were all in the U.S. Maybe they didn't expect any major resistance over there. Or maybe they left security up to someone else. Maybe so. If it's a cyborg, I hope his insurance is paid off. You know all the rules of football, Kev? Huh? Well, enough to watch it at least. Why? Just curious. I can never keep track of everything going on. All those rules. It's not that complicated, Raiden. You never watched it? Actually, you ever watched any sport? What can I say? I'm a man of culture, Kev. Give me a good movie over some dumb game any day. <laughs> culture? Oh, the sensitive artsy cyborg type, right? Right. Anyway, basketball's more my speed. Get the ball, put it in the net, two points. Oh, yeah, because that's all there is to basketball. <laughs> I swear, you crack me up sometimes, man. So the president's visit to Pakistan. It's meant to build government. Right. Uh -huh. the pa I they now wouldn't I know. Yeah, he won't. And how it, there's some. What about they have people? Oh, yeah, depending. No, so the president. Right. Uh -huh. The pa I they now wouldn't I know. Yeah, he won't. And how it, there's some. What about they have people? Oh, yeah, depending. No, so there's one thing I still don't get. If world marshals making it look like Desperado hacked their cyborgs, wouldn't that damage their reputation? Maybe they can hide the fact that they're involved in terrorism that way, but wouldn't they still be liable for the fact that they, you know, got hacked? They probably would, yeah. But the only thing they're looking for here is a profit. Maybe they need to demonstrate neglect if they're gonna make any money off of this. How so? Well, Kevin dug up some intel. Half of the contractors stationed here didn't get their contracts renewed at the end of March. The U.S. government rewrote their contract with Marshall earlier. Had to cut military spending after all, with the recession going on. And so they'll say the contractors were spread too thin to prevent the hacking. Exactly. And that'll only encourage the army to boost their Marshall headcount. I can't say if the military's directly involved in this assassination attempt or not, but... Well, what happened to the contractors they laid off? Who knows? Hopefully they found work, but... Work like that isn't exactly easy to come by. Ever since the war economy died down, after the Patriots, life's been pretty much hand-to-mouth for a lot of contractors. Huh. When you put it that way, I can almost understand what Sundowner was saying. Yeah, but starting a war just to boost your profits? That's crazy, Courtney. If there's no work for contractors out there, it's time to find another industry to work in. Not that I have any right to say that, but... Oh, come on, Raiden. Maybe you like to fight, sure, but you're not that... twisted. Yeah, well, in any case, I better get to work. Riding out. What's up? Okay, save complete. Don't let your guard down, okay? In Pakistan already, and so quickly. Ah, science never ceases to amaze me. When it's for peaceful purposes, you mean. <clears throat> well, yes, of course. Of course. I must say, though, the engineer behind that RLV craft looked rather young to me. Yeah. A gifted kid, you might say. I would love a chance to meet her sometime. Why? What would you say to her? Oh, I don't know. It's always just such a stimulating experience. Speaking with scientists from fields other than mine, that is. It often leads to all sorts of new insights, new ideas to work with. And speaking of that, I have yet to meet Dr. Emmerich, too. <laughs> I, uh, doubt you two would get along, actually. Oh, you think so? Hmm. Anyway, how are the brains doing? Oh, just fine. Safe and sound in Mexico. Now I just have to get them loaded and en route to Germany. Of course, the real challenge will come after that, I suppose. Yeah. We'll get there when we get there. Indeed. Indeed. Do be careful in the meantime. In Pakistan already, and so... Uh, when it... <clears throat> I, yeah. I, I, oh, it ends... Oh, any, oh now, of course... Yeah. Indeed. Hey, Wolf. What did you and Sam talk about before we fought? Nothing of note. He was not one to reveal himself to others. All right. You don't have to tell me. Raiden. I do not feel good about this. Do not allow yourself to be caught off guard. Duly noted. Hey, Wolf, 
What did you inst- No, oh. I do not do- How was the ride? Hey, Sonny. Fine, thanks. Though I wouldn't call it the smoothest ride ever. You sure that thing's really airworthy? Well, well, what do you expect? You're traveling at a few dozen times the speed of sound. I mean, she operates well within all the projected margins of safety, so yes. We'll have to work on the turbulence levels a bit before we can take tourists on it. But come on, you really can't complain. So it's meant mainly for cargo at the moment? Mm-hmm. We got a contract with COTS, NASA's Commercial Orbital Transportation Services. Mostly handling space deliveries, that kind of thing. We also joined the C-3PO, the Commercial Crew and Cargo Program Office's Passenger Transport Program. So soon we'll have private spacecraft bringing crew to the International Space Station. Wild times we're living in. Well, the space race has been over for decades now. It's no longer something countries engage in for vanity's sake. Still, lots of people are starting to see the industrial value of zero-gravity experiments. Plus, the costs are getting lower and lower with each passing year, to the point where we'll have a serious space tourism industry before long. Yeah, I heard about the space hotel the Russians opened up. But we're still not going any further than orbit, right? Well, one company's planning to have a lunar landing craft complete by 2020. Not ours, though. I'm just hoping we can get to Jupiter while Hal's still alive. Jupiter, huh? Wow, that's pretty far. Oh, hey, how did Earth look from up there? I can't even put it into words. I know I was still under the Kármán line, but it looked exactly like every satellite photo of Earth I've ever seen. No borders, no nothing. Just a whole lot of blue. Hopefully next time around, I can take my time and enjoy it. Yeah. But first things first, you know? Yep. Well, good luck, Jack. Right in. You designed that thing too, Sonny? Uh-uh. Nobody designed her. Nobody? Yep. She pretty much evolved by herself. Uh, I think I may be missing something here. We used a genetic algorithm to make it. Ever hear of that? They use it to build the car 